Hey folks, tonight we're looking at the Cumberbund attachment device from PXV Concepts and or Axle Advance. I don't know how the websites are going to be set up, but they are kind of one in the same now. Uh, so this thing is not the most apparent function. Uh, however, it takes your skeletonized cummerbunds and gives them some adjustment in the back that doesn't require rerouting and retying the shock cord. Um, not, not immediately useful uh, with traditional attachment methods in the front. However, if you're using tubes in the front on a skeletonized cummerbund, you will know uh, that you're kind of stuck where you set that thing at and you don't have rapid adjustment unless you're using Velcro adapters in the front, at which point in time are you really using tubes? Uh, this helps you get around having to use Velcro adapters to make adjustments for cold weather layers, uh, potentially side plates uh, or internal radios, whatever you might add or subtract between missions uh, or LARP events. This is potentially a solution to remove some of that pain. All right, so let's get it on the table and take a look at how it works. Uh, I don't know that there's an installation video out there already. I checked out his website and I didn't see one. Um, so hopefully I got this right. There's a chance I didn't and uh, we'll get him in the comments and let me know if I'm an idiot. But let's get it on the table and take a look. All right, hey guys, uh, a viewer, first time I posted this, pointed out that I'm an idiot. Uh, which is absolutely true in this case. Uh, I installed this uh, completely wrong in, in the rest of the video. So I'm going to fit this in here. Uh, I've, I firmly believe in acknowledging uh, when I do something stupid. Uh, so I didn't want to hide that fact and completely reshoot this. Uh, we'll plug this fix into the middle uh, and then just keep this in mind as you watch the rest of my stupid explanation uh, going on in the video. But the next clip that you see will be how to correctly install this on the cummerbund side. The vest side was still correct. Uh, long story short, I'm an idiot, uh, and here's how to do it correctly. All right, so if you look at the adapter, I have removed the Phillips side of the Chicago screw, and now the Tegris has opened up. Why I didn't catch this the first time I don't know, uh, not a smart man, but uh, we've got it now. And this makes so much more sense. So we'll get these other two halves out of the way here. Oh, I'm gonna, there's my washer, all right. Uh, we'll get these out of the way. And then we still want it oriented this way, but what I failed to notice was that this could come apart like this, and this just makes infinitely more sense. I knew that VXV had to have come up with a smarter way of doing this than what I was picking up on. Uh, but <clears throat> if we work this in like this, hopefully I'm not blocking this from view too much. Now we have an actual positive lock on here. We'll get our flathead side, thread that in here. So flathead going through the, uh, fat, the the wrapped side, and then washer and Phillips side. Tighten this up. This immediately makes more sense. You're not stuck trying to gird on the Chicago screw for friction. You're just getting it snug move this portion up out of the way here drop flathead through the fabric side again set our washer on top of the hole set the phillips oh boy well that's gone uh but <clears throat> phillips in there and now we are we are actually through the molly uh so there's no way this can come off all right, now that I have acknowledged my stupidity, uh, you can proceed with the rest of the video and it'll make so much more sense. All right, through the magic of uh, iPhone editing and having two of these, I have already installed the Cumberbund attachment device, but I will walk you through kind of what that looked like uh, from the other side 
and show you how this thing functions. All right, so typically, if you are uh, installing a JPC cummerbund, you will route it under the zipper and then through this vertical webbing. All right, I hope I hope at least this step is not new to anybody, but I have seen them routed on top of the zipper, which I don't recommend even if you are not planning on using the zipper uh, because it just forces it into your back, right? Uh, but so we've got our, our cummerbund routed and then typically you would tie these tabs to the pals webbing on the back of the vest and it would essentially lock in your cummerbund plus just a little bit of stretch from the shock cord, right? What we do with the cummerbund attachment device is we put that between the shock cord and the cummerbund tails so that we can adjust with these tabs if we need to let out or take up uh, some of our cummerbund. All right, so this, this step I'm a little foggy on because I feel like I'm skipping something, uh, but I haven't seen the ramifications of that yet. So this is uh, Tegris reinforced on both sides, uh, bare Tegris on the back and kind of uh, Cordura covered or squadron covered uh, Tegris on the front with two Chicago screws in between where the webbing attaches. On this side, it's only friction fit and I didn't put a ton of effort into gearing down these screws any harder, but I think if I did, everything checks for it only being friction fit. Uh, so with with just the webbing run through uh, the, the Tegra sandwich there, if I kind of anchor this side and pull on it, you'll notice that it's not coming free. As long as you secure it past the first stitch line, there's a good bit of bulk there and it doesn't want to slip between the layers of Tegris. So that, that's really the one step that I'm not sure of if I should be anchoring the, the cummerbund tail to this device some other means. Uh, if you were really, really worried about it, if you took even just a zip tie and ran it through all three tails, and secured it on itself, then there would be no way it could pull past the Chicago screws unless it broke the zip tie. And if you were worried about that, you could do the same thing with some gutted 550 cord and it would give you a positive block there. All right, I, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna be an issue, uh, but if you were jumping this thing, or well, I don't even know if you would wanna jump uh, this thing just, just based on it not being part of what was a jumpable vest, uh, but if you were really worried you had a, a lot of weight on the cummerbund or you're worried about getting snagged or something, you could put a positive block there. And it could be as simple as a, a malice clip, uh, obviously a long one, through all three. And that would, that would give you a, a nearly instant fix if you didn't trust zip ties. All right, uh, so once that's done, you slip it through the layers here. All right, loosen, off, loosen up your screws slip it through, you can kind of see there's really no, no air gap there right now. Uh, and it tightens up really well. Then you've got your, your running ends of your, your webbing here. You're going to want to make yourself a loop. It doesn't really matter where right now, but make yourself a closed loop by running back through that tri-glide. And then you can secure that to the JPC uh, with your shock cord. If you want to use two, two lengths of shock cord, you could absolutely have these things crisscrossed. It'll it'll crisscross just as well as the the cummerbund tails themselves. So you could kind of secure this end way over here, and you could secure this end way over here, and just kind of have it all stacked and, and make yourself a nightmare. Or you could take up a bunch of slack and just kind of secure them both in the middle. And I'm fairly positive you could do it with the same length of shot cord. Uh, as long as you were smart about how you routed it, which may take a little bit of figuring, uh, but that's why I have the pair. Right. Do you really need a pair? No, but your your plate carrier might end up a little lopsided, so I would recommend you have a pair. Right. Uh, so then, instead of now, if we need to adjust the sizing on this, instead of having to untie and reroute the shot cord, we can just give ourselves more slack, move this towards the end, It's not gonna pull out on you. 
unless you try to. Uh, and then you can see now, well, we're we're bottomed out here. Uh, so that's as, that's as big as we can go. I apologize. Uh, however, we can we can take up slack just as easily here. We can pull this, and that'll that'll cause this to slide in uh, to take up that slack. So we can get smaller for sure, uh, and we could have started there so that we had room to let it out. I just kind of started at the other end of the spectrum because uh, everybody's on the spectrum with it, you know, as as loose as it gets. Uh, it just looked prettier, and I didn't notice that. Right. Uh, so you can absolutely do that. Uh, again, you can you can tighten these up. We could have this one, you know kind of all the slack up to that and secure it way over here. And then we could pull this one all the way through and stack our second device over here and tie that down over here. And it would work out just fine. Being a little busy, you'd kind of have to let out the slack on this one, give yourself some room, let out the slack on this one, and then kind of spread them back out. Uh, but that is the cummerbund attachment device. Again, if you're like, why would I need to do that? It saves you from having to reroute shock cord, which is not overly difficult, but it is uh, slow when you have to resize as you go and then kind of anchor it to make sure it doesn't fall out on you and go back and forth. Using this method, your cummerbund is never uh, disconnected from the vest and kind of free floating uh, while you're trying to adjust seismic. It is also uh, much more intuitive to slide this out, say an inch, and know that you've given yourself an extra inch than to kind of work in molly math and like, okay, I let it out uh, an inch and a half now, and then try to get your shot cord with the same tension on it. However, all of that is kind of for not if, you're just using the Velcro uh, attachment because unless you have a pouch right here, you can always take up or give up slack on your attachment. It's really for if you have a, a cummerbund that is terminated in tubes and has to join right there. Now the adjustment has to come out of the back. All right, so uh, if, you, if you prefer skeletonized cummerbunds, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, uh, I do as well. Uh, this is uh, potentially a fix for rapid adjustment with tubes. All right. Thanks for your time, guys. Uh, check it out on his website if you have any interest or feel like this is useful to you.